an overview of Dynachem's capabilities regarding fluid properties calculations for solvents and mixtures. In a nutshell, what we're going to do is to try to help you answer questions like these. What is the boiling point of triethylamine at one bar? What happens if I drop the pressure to 500 millibars? Um, if I'm doing a solvent switch from MTBE to methanol, will I encounter an azeotrope? What operating pressure should I use with 40 degrees on the jacket? And speaking of pressure, you may be under a little bit of pressure, like the gentleman shown at the left, to get the answers to questions like these. So our goal is to help you do this as quickly and easily as we can. Now, if you look at the questions that are on the list, you'll see that underlying them all are questions that have to do with physical properties. And broadly speaking, I've got the questions grouped into two groups. There are properties uh, for the pure components and mixtures, things like boiling point, or I need to know the density, for example, of acetone water to answer the second question. And the questions at the bottom have to do with vapor liquid and liquid liquid equilibria. Corresponding to those two groupings, there are two different tools in Dynachem that we'll take a look at today. I should also comment that in addition to physical properties, you'll see that we need to know some other information to answer a number of those questions. So for the second one, for example, how big is ST200H? Um, for the fourth one, I need to know things about how much material I have for the n-heptane in water, and I need to know things about the mixing capabilities of reactor R800. So we're going to focus mainly on the physical properties, and at the end I'll come back and talk about how Dynachem can help with the other parts of some of the more challenging questions on this list. So for the pure components and mixtures, the tool that we use in Dynachem is called the Dipper Solvent Tool. For those who aren't familiar with Dipper, is the Design Institute for Physical Properties. It is a consortium sponsored by the American Institute of Chemical Engineers, and Scale-Up Systems are a member of that consortium. And the tool that we provide queries the Dipper data bank to give us information about the properties, uh, pure component, and then we do some mixture calculations for properties as a function of temperature for a number of common solvents. This is available in Dynachem Resources, your one-stop shop for Dynachem. So let me grab Dynachem Resources and bring it in. So for those of you who are not familiar with Dynachem Resources, I see we have a few new people in the uh, call today. It's broken into three sections of, of the screen. First, we've got a Google-like search box, so if I'm interested in physical properties, I can just start typing, and then it will do auto-completion for me, and I get a list of content from all the different types of content that are available in Dynachem Resources. And so you can see with the little uh, words that are grouped in the brackets at the left, there are utilities, there are knowledge base articles, there's training content, you can see some models, and if I hover the cursor over, I get a little preview of each given type of content. You'll also see at the very bottom that we have recordings for prior events, just like this one that we're recording today, and those are available that you can watch at any time. Lastly, you'll see that the content is grouped, kind of like an Amazon. If you like this, then you'll probably like that sort of function. So for this uh, utility, for example, you'll see a knowledge base article and two training exercises that go along with it. You can see in the center a TXY diagram. On the right, an XY diagram, uh, the activity coefficients, the gammas, and then some messages, and we'll work our way through those messages. So let's take a look at, it, at examples. The easiest thing to do to get a feel for this is to just work your way up the alcohols. So if we start with methanol, you can see the shape of the diagram, nice easy separation, you know, an open curve, 
the blue curve here is the bubble point. So if I were to start with a 30 weight percent methanol mixture and keep heating it up, this is the point at which I would form the first bubble of vapor and come across and ask what vapor would be in equilibrium with that liquid at the, that temperature, and it would be this vapor over here on the pink curve. So we've chosen methanol water. You can choose your activity coefficient calculations for the liquid. In this case, we're using NRTL. You can choose UNIFAC or the LLE or the modified version of the UNIFAC. And you can choose the display units to be in weight or mole percent. If I want to know how that curve shifts if I lower the pressure, I just adjust the pressure and you can see how the curve has been redrawn and now everything is at a lower temperature as I would expect. If I scroll over here to the right, I see the XY diagram. So just working your way from 0 to 100 weight percent and picking off the points that are in equilibrium from the two curves, you combine those and you end up with this XY curve. And as indicated in the little table, no azeotrope appears. So let's just look at the next one on the list, ethanol. So if I choose ethanol, you can see, as we all know, there's an azeotrope at uh, a high weight percent of ethanol. In this case, it's about uh, 94, 95 weight percent. And that means that if I were to start uh, boiling a mixture here, and I didn't add any fresh ethanol, do anything special, I was just concentrating and distilling in a given pot, then I couldn't exceed that point in terms of composition, so I couldn't get to 100% ethanol. You can see the same thing shown on the XY, so azeotrope where X and Y are equal hits the XY curve, the two curves come together, and this tells me I have a homogeneous azeotrope and its temperature and composition. Homogeneous meaning there is only one liquid phase present in the system. Take a look, say, at isopropanol. I can use UNIFAC, and again, you'll see that the shape is very similar. How about isobutanol? Well, in this case, you can see that the behavior has gotten a lot more interesting. So we've got these two legs that are drawn in at the bottom here. That's two liquid phases that are in equilibrium, one at a uh, isobutanol rich around 80% weight percent and a water rich that's around uh, 10 weight percent. And those will coexist as I heat the mixture. If I'm at a point in between them, those will coexist until I hit this point and at that point, I have two liquids, the yellow points, in equilibrium with my first bubble of vapor, which is the green point. And you can see over here that, in fact, that occurs at 77 degrees C. Here's the uh, composition. And it's a heterogeneous azeotrope because I have two liquids in equilibrium with the vapor. Notice my note says immiscible solvents. Uh, have been indicated by doing the equilibrium calculations and looking at stability.